For more than a year, we've been hearing about a failing part of the care system, a hidden world of neglect and police call-outs, a growth industry of unregulated accommodation run mainly by private companies. They're paid by councils, often eye-watering sums to house teenagers in care, in flats and hostels, bedsits and even caravans, with an alarming lack of oversight. The thought that there's money going into places like this that are meant to support kids. I don't think they realise the severity of how bad it can mess up a child. They don't see the risk that these children are in, and they're in great danger. A 15-year-old boy is treated like a stray dog. How is this possible? The government has promised reform. It's already told local authorities children under 16 shouldn't be housed in this unregulated accommodation. Tonight, England's Children's Commissioner is publishing her investigation into a sector she says, despite the dangers, has been allowed to expand unchecked. Newsnight's seen it first. This is hugely urgent. These are children who are at risk every day of the week. They'll be at risk this evening, today, around the country. And we are talking about thousands of children here. Her report reveals one in eight children in care in England spent time in an unregulated home last year. Unlike children's homes, which are regulated by Ofsted, this so-called supported accommodation is not inspected and results, says Anne Longfield, in children too often being left to fend for themselves. Some of the report was researched here on Merseyside. It is a call for change on everything Newsnight's been revealing for the past 18 months. And although England's Children's Commissioner welcomes the government ban on under-16s in these unregulated homes, she goes much further. She wants it made illegal to put any child in one because she says they are not appropriate places for anyone under 18. Those children are in care for a reason. They've had huge trauma in li their life. They need day-to-day -day support. They need day-to-day -day care to help them recover from the trauma and move towards adulthood with certainty. So government have started on this, but it needs to be bold now and go that extra step. Not all supported accommodation is poor, says Anne Longfield. Alex? Some providers set high standards, like Alex Aresti, who's spoken to her team. Come in, come in, come in. Thank you very much. Just got to do a little, little bit of housekeeping if I can, just to sure. have a check. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Alex grew up in care himself. His company runs this unregulated home on Merseyside for older teenagers. So we, we've got five young people in the flats. Each one has their own self-contained um, kitchen, bedroom, lounge. Supported accommodation is supposed to help teenagers in care prepare for independence. So yeah, little kitchen, it's all, it's all electric. Staff will come in sometimes, they'll assist the young people with, with cooking. Um, or sort you, of teaching them how to do it? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a good one foot in, one foot out. It's a good stepping stone to being on their own in a flat. Even though he runs this home, like Anne Longfield, he thinks the law needs to change. The 16 to 18 year olds he takes in need more from the state, which is effectively their parent. The Children's Commissioner says nobody under 18 should be in an unregulated setting. Do you think that's the kind of reshape of the system that's needed? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've worked with young people for, for 15 years, you know, probably a bit more now, and I've never met a young person aged 16, 17 who's, who's ready to do what we're asking them to do. I think the system is broken. I don't know if you've seen other unregulated, but obviously we've been doing stories about places that didn't look like this. A few years back, when I was more kind of hands-on, we, we, we had to move young people out of other provisions and in, into ours, and yeah, it wasn't great. I think when you walk in, you get a feel from a place. You get a feel of, of warmth, of cleanliness. In the past, where I've seen some providers who the accommodations are, are really it's, it's just abysmal. Hi, Ben. 17 year old Ben didn't want his face on camera, but was happy to invite us in. He's lived here for a year and says it's transformed his time in care. When I first like, opened the door and walked in, my jaw almost dropped, more or less. I was like shocked with how clean and well furbished the flats were. It was just mental to think about like that opportunity to live there has been given to me. It just doesn't feel normal for me to have this luxury, more or less, because I've been so used to little. 
we've um, we've put together a nice space for the young people outside. Supporting vulnerable teenagers is about more than the environment they live in. The Children's Commissioner report warns these kids are at risk of criminal and sexual exploitation. And Alex knows even a good home has to be watchful. Look, you get any group of vulnerable teenagers together, you're going to get unsociables who are surrounding that, uh, a bit like a honeypot effect. Uh, in the past where we, we found clear evidence of, you know, empty bags, knife, ties, that type of thing, everything that would kind of allude to, you know, dealing drugs. We've got to be vigilant to do what we can to stop it. We work closely with um, the wider system, you know, the police, social workers. You know, anyone under the age of 18 is vulnerable and ultimately they'll have been coerced into that lifestyle. That concern is chilling enough and a key reason why England's Children's Commissioner is making that call for the government to ban under-18s from unregulated homes. But more sinister still is evidence from Merseyside Police, who told her criminality in these settings is rife. They've identified several companies with directors with links to organised crime and staff with criminal records, including for violent offences. One staff member had even been restricted from seeing his own children by social services, but was still working with some of the country's most vulnerable children. So what we found in Merseyside was that criminality was part of the fabric of the service. Criminal gangs and those that are seeking to groom children to use as part of their criminal activities, which will usually be drug, run drug running and delivery, not only are targeting those children, within homes, but also are looking to establish and put themselves in the situation of running some of those homes because they will then get access to the children. This intelligence comes from a specialist team that was investigating unregulated homes for Merseyside Police. It's given the force an understanding of how organised crime is getting its grip on some of this provision for vulnerable kids. My sense is that this is not unique to one force or another. Criminal gangs and organized crime will work as, as far and wide as they can if they understand there's a loophole for them to, to benefit from. Dr. Shalev Green's been researching missing children. She's uncovered how criminals are manipulating the Disclosure and Barring Service, or DBS, to gain access to teenagers in unregulated homes. If I apply for DBS, my previous employer will give me an honest review as such uh, and check of uh, anything to be concerned about. Now, if a criminal organization is the employer, uh, there's no reason for them to be honest. In fact, they will be dishonest, say that person is qualified, capable, there's nothing wrong with them, and so the DBS will pass. And there's a loophole there because it's not being verified with previous records with police records. What it's actually doing is creating not only a facade that children are safe, but also it's enabling those predators access to those children. Back at Alex's Merseyside home, 18-year-old Courtney is introducing staff to her new arrival. How heavy was she born? Seven pound one. The Children's Commissioner says every child should be cared for in a stable, secure home. And Courtney, who lived in one of Alex's flats until recently, says she got that here. Feels good to be back. And so staff good to her. This is the open plan kitchen. As the Children's Commissioner makes clear, not all homes are as good as this one. And current resident Ben has had bad news. His council had been taking him to see other unregulated properties. They want me to move in with another company. Basically, it is literally like living on your own. There's no staff, it's just you. The, the staff, they check on you, but like, there's no staff on site. There's problems with rats and mice. There's a smash went, well, got broken into the other day. For kids in care, I don't think financial um, worries should be an issue if you want a kid to move on. That should be the least of your worries. But as the Children's Commission's report says, with a quarter of children in care now aged 16 and 17, struggling councils are overly reliant on accommodation that is too often shoddy or dangerous. Just living on my own, it'll have a physical, mental and emotional impacts. What do you think 
16 and 17 year old need. To be listened to. That's it.